Good day collectors! So here we are again and uh, this should be a good video. Uh, I love this Aoshima brand because historically they seem to have the best paint jobs in uh, die cast, at least as far as the non super limited edition kind of die cast goes. So for general production runs, I think this brand might have the best paint. But we're gonna find out because I bought these things and a lot of them look like they're actually totally brand new, like the tape seal hasn't been broken. So we're gonna check it out. All right, so let's go in uh, chronological order. We're gonna start with this first one here from 1972. And this is a Nissan Laurel. This would be the second generation Nissan Laurel. For those that didn't grow up in Japan, the Laurel is slotted above the Bluebird and uh, below the Cedric. So that's where it stands in Nissan's lineup. This was a uh, nickname like the, the pig's butt because of its wide haunches in the rear. And it actually has style. A lot of people say the styling was maybe a copycat of the Ford Gran Torino or the Mercury Cougar of the time. I suppose if you, I could see some of that, some American styling going on back here. There was oddly uh, an electric version of this car as well. Uh, so yeah, Nissan has been doing electric vehicles, I guess, they way back here in the 70s. So this is body code C130, and uh, this was sold between 1972 and 77, this body style of uh, this fastback Nissan Laurel. And there's was either a uh, 1.8 up to a 2.8 liter engine, it could be an inline 4 or an inline 6 up front. All right, let's take this off the stand. I take all my Aoshimas off the stands and put them into a separate display case. So let's take a look at this. All right, so. So it's a crazy looking pink color, but I like it. I find these, I'm not sure if this is uh, modified by Liberty Walk. Some, some of them are, but uh, I'm not sure about this one. It's obviously lowered and it got these small wheels on there. Okay, so it's a metallic pink. You can see the speckling going on. And this one does seem to have a little bit of orange peel here, at least on the front hood. But I don't really see any contaminants going on, so that's good. Well, let's see here. You know, pretty tight body panel lines. A really big uh, side blinker. Gas cap, gas door. I'm not sure. There's probably a badge there or something like that on the real car. One interesting design feature about this car is the rear taillights are built into the bumper. That that doesn't make much logical sense to me. You know, the bumper's there to absorb minor shocks, and so I'm pretty sure those lights would crack if it bumped into something. Very strange choice on uh, Nissan's part. We got these kicked up exhaust tips. I'm sure that's an aftermarket kind of mod. Just a blank license plate there. Okay, nice smooth paint here in the trunk. This wing, I'm sure, is plastic. It looks pretty good, though. Interior, some black detail. All the Yoshimas, well, actually, that's not true. I was going to say they all have black interiors, but some of them have a little bit of color. But this one's just all black. Okay, some ribbing here. That's all right. Okay. Pretty good definition of the hood. You know, I like these headlights. I'm not sure if those are standard st style headlights or if these are modified headlights, but I like them. They remind me of a skyline a little bit, modified skylines. This black is recessed and is painted black. Turn signals are just painted orange. Okay. Aoshima doesn't write what the car is, unfortunately. It just says the brand and where it was made. Doesn't tell us when it was made. I couldn't really find out what series a lot of these came from. Uh, they have a, a bunch of different Grachan collections. They're up to Grachan collection number 12, but this is not in 11 or 12. I think this is from the best series number one, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, well, yeah, it, it's pretty nice, actually. I mean, no no major f flaws here in the, in the paintwork. It is quite a big butt, though, car there, huh? What do you guys think? I like it, though. It's really neat. All right, so let me... Uh, Let's see, we'll have this thing spinning back here in the background while I open up the next car. Okay, so the next car is a 1973 Nissan Skyline, body code KPGC 110 and is the coupe version. Skylines of this era came in either four-door, two-door, and sometimes station wagons or vans as they're called in Japan. So see, that one I actually had to cut the tape. This is a brand new model. So. But I, again, I'm not sure. This might be from the 
scratch on best collection number one if I recall correctly okay all right so now what kind of paint are we looking at it looks like a metallic purple yeah definitely a lot of big sparkling going on there okay so there's a silver painted window trimming seems pretty good the mirrors are just kind of crude to be honest with you and there's no silver on them all right door handles painted silver the gas cap is pretty plain white Kyosha does a better job they actually and Konami they print stuff there on the gas cap okay so the rear we got these big tail lights I might be mistaken but I think their regular OEM cars have four tail lights but this is might be one of those modified Liberty Walk uh, versions okay the tail pipes here you know painted silver kind of elementary in their casting but uh, it's better than nothing I guess little red tail lights eh, almost a vertical license plate there okay let's go up to the top hmm this one though some contaminant in the paint okay black interior this side not much to complain about this one does seem to have more orange peel as well so maybe all the Yoshimas aren't awesome I, I do have like maybe 30 of them before I got this batch in there's also a, looks like a water stain or something there weird so that's not so great okay uh, but this front end is pretty interesting there are four inserts here but this is definitely not a standard skyline. You got this extra bodywork coming over it. Okay, silver bumpers painted. Some molded in details there. No texture in the grill though. Okay. Eh, I would say this is the worst of the bunch, but we only have two down, so. Okay. So the next one in line here. Oh, failed to mention, this is a fourth generation Skyline, and they sold over 670,000 of those Skylines. It's also known as the Datsun K series outside of Japan, and the fourth generation Skyline was sold between 72 and 77. Okay, so let's get to the third one now. This is a Toyota. We have the first generation Celica, and the first generation Celica was uh, sold between 1970 and 77, but we're looking at a 73 model. This one does seem to have been opened. There's no tape at all. Okay, so let me get the screwdriver and get this off. Now, this is a, not a standard Celica. It has a liftback body style, which gives it a body code RA25. And it, this body style came out in 1973. It's been dubbed the, the Mustang Celica because the rear half of it looks so much like a Mustang, right? You can see. That's like a Mustang Fastback. Okay, so up front there's a little, either a 1.6 up to a 2.2 liter inline 4. Okay, so let's see here. So now we got a metallic flake again. It's, it's not blue, but it's not purple. I mean, you can see the purple car behind. It's, I guess it's more along the blue scale of uh, color. And it does have these fender flares. So maybe this is like a Liberty Walk kit. I'm not sure though. Okay, so we got these interesting chrome accents here in the rear, on that fastback section, the liftback section. Door handle, window trimming looks pretty good. All these Aoshimas have blocked off wheels. They just all do. It's kind of a, that's the one weak point about Aoshimas. One major weak point, I think. Okay, so in the back, again, it looks very similar to a Mustang because it has the vertical tail light ribs here. Okay, so this model's got a little slight angle to the license plate, and then a separate, no, it's just, is it a separate piece? I think that, I think this is a separate piece glued on, because there's a little mold flash there. Alright, so, either way, it's, it's nice to see a, a separately painted uh, exhaust, pit, exhaust pipe. Okay, so it does look like... There is some depth to these tail lights. You know, it is a transparent type of plastic, and then they painted the black over it. So that's pretty good. Okay, they could have gone the easy route and just painted in some red and orange on top of a black piece of plastic. But this is this depth to those lights. I like it. Okay, going up to the top here, plain interior, but nice window window molding. 
some sort of detail on the roof, but this paint seems to be laid on pretty thick. I feel like there's very little definition there because I feel like the paint filled it in a lot. So too bad. Uh, separate uh, headlamp lenses there. Some ribbing here in the grill. It's molded in. That's painted. That's painted. And then the turn signals are just painted as well as the bumper. Okay, so hmm. I like it. I think this is the best one so far. I don't see any, you know, contaminants in the paint or water stains or bubbling. It seems to be less of the orange peel effect here. It's not so bad there. The roof is almost perfect though. That's a really nice reflection. So very good. Okay. So I guess we'll take this one off and put this one on. So number four, what we have here is a Mazda Cosmo AP. That AP means anti-pollution. This is all, I guess, in the, uh, let's see what year this is. It is a, it doesn't say the year, but uh, the, the genera second generation Cosmo, which is this, it came out in 1975 and was sold up until 1981. It was also known as the RX-5, I think, in Japan. And uh, the Cosmo was originally to promote the rotary engines that Mazda made, you know, so it's a space age kind of name, Cosmo. So this, you could get a two-rotor wankel in the front of this thing, but the anti-pollution, I think, is the, the version where they offered a four-cylinder four engine. I might be mistaken, but I know that rotary engines generally are not very uh, efficient, so it would make sense that a regular inline-four would be a more anti-polluting kind of engine. But again, I'm just kind of speculating now. All right, so let me take this off the stand. Okay, so again, it's a it's a pink, but it's not a metallic pink, I don't think. See, I think this one, it, what we're looking at the shiniest is the actual casting below a translucent pink spray, which is a really cool way to paint something, I think. Just for comparison here. So, this is clearly a metallic flake inside the paint. But here, you can see how it, it's so light near the the panel gaps and then dark because there's a lot of paint in that gap. So that what makes me believe this is just a translucent uh, pink clear coat. And that's why you can see, you know, the darkness in the grooves because there's a lot of paint again and then it's really shiny right at the bo edges because there's very little paint there. Whereas this of course is just a metallic pink. So there is some differences there. And I like that. It's really cool. It means that this casting must have been really nice before they were able to paint it. Okay. So clearly there's a pretty wacky body kit on this one here with the the rivet or body screw dimples there. And this window is uh, design-wise really weird, right? What's what's going on? Why does it come below? Really strange styling here. Masta. Okay. And then, yeah, that the rear end is also kind of weird looking, I think. It looks like bull horns or something. But it's nice that Aoshima, again, has the separate color, at least. This one is molded into the base plate. But uh, they painted it, so that's great. They also painted these little bumperettes, the white license plate. And again, there's some depth there. It looks like it's translucent red plastic. But then they painted the edges silver. Okay, so that's just some dust. Okay, let's go to the top. That paint is really cool. This one seems to have like a black roll cage. Interesting. Some ribs here, pretty nice. Not sure if that's a divot in the zinc or too much paint, something weird there. Really strange front end. I don't find it very attractive. It seems obvious now that they painted the silver grill on top of that pink, the whole car was painted pink and then they added this paint app after. Okay, plastic insert light to think, but why is that one so far in? Where's this one? It's sticking out, so some quality problems there on that headlight. And then uh, painted on turn signal blinkers. Okay, a little groove there and some black it looks like. Okay, so a little silver for a turn signal I'm guessing. 
Okay. And then your basic plain bottom. Okay, so, well, there are some treaded tires here. Are they the same? I wonder if they do different treads like Kyosho. Well, yeah, those look different, right? Maybe not. These look similar. I don't think they go to having different tires on every model like Kyosho does. Okay, well, it's kind of an ugly car, I think, out of this bunch, but uh, quality of manufacture-wise, it's pretty good. Seems alright. A little bit of a problem there. Maybe a nick there, I think, but the pink part of it is really nice, I think. Alright, so this might be out of order now, but I'm just going to put it up there. Alright, three more to go. So this next one is a Toyota Mark II, and this is the body code MX41, which makes this the third generation Toyota Mark II. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, there is tape. It's, I don't know if this is original tape, though. I think it is the original tape, so this is, this is a brand new model. Okay. Let me get it off the stand here. Oh, I think this might be a chase car. I might be mistaken, but... Yeah. What makes me think this is a chase car is this base plate isn't black. I don't know if the camera's going to show the color difference. Okay, maybe you can see there. So it's a kind of like a dark gray, bluish gray, and it's different. Well, I might be mistaken. I have a chase car from one of the box sets that I bought, but it had gold printing on it. So maybe this isn't a chase car. It's just got a different color base than all the other ones. So it's I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Okay, well, let's get back to the model here. So, really interesting body kit on this one. And, uh, let me talk a little bit about, about the MX-41. This would be the third generation Mark II, which uh, would have been sold between 76 and 1980. And there's a choice of inline fours or inline six cylinder engines between 1.8 to 2.6 liters. So that's it for the stats I got on that one. Wow, this is not an attractive car. <laughs> for me, this is a pretty ugly front end of a vehicle. Uh, it almost looks like it's smiling right there. It almost looks like a cartoon character, but not a pretty one. Oh well. Okay, anyhow, I'm trying to get it like one of each casting from this Grachan collection. There's still a few more out there, but this is a good uh, dent in the list of one cars I want to get. Not sure what these would be on the real car. Maybe some sort of chrome vents or something. It's an ivory color. It's not actually white. It's like a... Uh, could be a really faint yellow. Can I, I don't know. It's, it's, been, it's in between yellow and white. Okay. Oh, well look at this. The wheels, for the first time, look like there's an attempt to have some air between the spokes. And it, like, it's trying to be, mimic like a disc brake back there. That's a first of all my Yoshimas. So that's better than usual. So that's nice. Okay. But unfortunately what's nice, not nice, is when you have a white paint, you have to really th lay it on thick. Or in this case, not enough. And you can see the darkness of the zinc behind it. It's too bad. Okay. But I didn't get to pick and choose. I mean, I think this is an, an old model from one of the early... Grachan series. Look at this old 70s type of uh, tail lights there, but they are translucent, so nice. Okay, again, we got the silver painting on the uh, exhaust there, so that's nice. It actually is decent detail, and for some reason on this one, yeah, this is different. All the other ones have blank bottoms in the brand, right? So this one's unique, it has a different base plate. A different bottom of the car, a different color base plate, but the text isn't gold, so I don't know. Maybe this is a chase car, but I don't know. Why would they have a chase car in such a plain color? Such is a mystery. Really strange mystery. It's a weird wing. It's not very wide. It only goes covers the edge of the trunk, but not the ed edges of the car. Strange. Okay. The mirrors here. Interesting. They're kind of, they're part of the casting, but they come out. It's just a weird mirror. It's really, 
rounded mirror on a really angular car. Okay, so the interior we can't see much. The glass itself is pretty nice though. Unfortunately, it's just the color of the interior. Not sure why these car co car model companies don't just change the color of the plastic. I don't think it costs any more to buy red plastic or buy gray plastic and just mold it in a different color on some of their models. Oh well. Okay, so two to go. So this next one is a Skyline again, but this is the fifth generation Skyline which uh, ran from 1977 up until 81 but obviously we can see this is a 1979 model and it looks like a brand new one as well again the tape has never been cut so let's take a look unfortunately again I, I just bought every one I that I saw that I didn't have in my collection these were from a flea market type of place I just lucked out someone apparently was getting rid of these so I so I just bought this. Oh, well, I didn't see this when I was at the flea market, but this is a metallic black. You can see the speckling in there. I'm guessing the, the mica flakes or whatever. But it does look like it's a factory orange peel kind of spray painting going on here. Okay. Really long and low-looking car. From this profile, it looks like a Aston Martin Lagonda, the, the first one. Am I right? Or no, the... V12, one of the early 70s Aston Martins. Okay, well, let's see here at the top. Now this one, unfortunately, does look like there's some paint bubbling or paint rash developing on the roof. Okay, so there's a little silver gas cap there in the trunk. A tiny little spoiler here. Ooh, that's pretty neat. Unfortunately, a little extra plastic flash there, but really big translucent uh, tail lamps, which are cool. The silver exhaust tip again, silver painted bumper, and this little silver painted inset. Okay, this side. What is that? That is just dust. All right. Okay. Not much else to say, I guess. There. What about the front? Now again, we got these really rectangular headlamps. Unfortunately, absolutely no detail behind that clear plastic. It's this wall of silver, so it doesn't look really realistic. Would have been nice if they molded in some circle into circles or something like that. So it looks like a, a, a paint bu a bucket or something, you know, the housing of the behind the lens. The grill has two slots there. Okay, mold it in. Hmm. It does seem to be slightly recessed. This black area I'm picking at, and then it's painted, of course. There is a recess here as well. Okay. So, hmm, not sure. I generally don't like black cars, but again, I had to buy what I could. I'm not sure what series this came from. I think it's pretty old. Okay. Yeah, back to the plain bottoms here, or less detailed bottoms with the branding. Okay. All right, eh, it's all right, I guess. Okay, so the last one is also a Toyota Mark II, but now we're getting into 1984, so this would be the fifth generation, and this one has been opened before. Okay. Oh, okay, so this also doesn't have a black base. So, deductive reasoning would maybe think that uh, these two cars here came from the same collection, because you know, they have the same color bases. Whereas the other ones come from a different collection. Okay, so the GX71 was uh, sold in the real world between 19, I believe 84, yeah, 1984 to 1988. And it came in two versions a hardtop version, which is what we're looking at, or just the standard version. So the hardtop has a slanted front end and it has no frame around the windows. So it's a f frameless window. So that's how you tell it from the standard one. Alright, so obviously we are looking at a white color, and uh, so the paint isn't is trying to fill in these massive gaps. These door panel gaps look pretty bad. It's not, not good. But it does have these wheels again that have a little more depth to them, so it looks like you're trying to look like uh, spokes with some disc brakes behind it. Really weird uh, body kit on this thing here. And then that doesn't look good. That part of the casting there doesn't look very good. OK. 
Okay, let's go back. Really big tail lights here. A lot of depth and dimension to them. Okay. Hmm. Well, this is a nice, nice little execution. We got the uh, silver of the base plate, but then they glued on this extra piece of plastic. It's kind of like a underwing or something, or a diffuser wing. Wow. Must really scrape the ground though. Okay. All right. So then we got this wing here. A blank license plate. Standard white stuff going on there. Let's wrap around to the front. That looks standard. Looks like a well. Now see, what's weird is this one does have like indications of lamps behind the plastic, and they actually painted it yellow on the middle. So that's neat. And then you, you got the orange here and the blinker. So that's the front end of this one is so great. How much more effort they put into this compared to this last black one, which has no detail at all. So that's really neat. This is actually, these might be the best headlights I've seen on an Aoshima so far. The lens and then detail behind the lens. So unfortunately the car itself is kind of weird. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the Mark II so much. Although it does look long and sleek. The cabin just looks a little tall for me. All right, anyways, this side any problems? Doesn't look like this, well, this must be the casting itself. It seems identical, this weird bump here. And then it's also here. So the the mold itself seems to have this weird parting parting line problem or something. Hmm. I don't know. But the paint choice is just bad. So uh, these always come in two color choices. I don't know what the other color choice was, but it's probably better than this white that's trying to fill in this dark dark groove here, un unsuccessfully in my opinion. Okay. All right. Well, uh, when I went into this video, I thought they were going to be super awesome. I would say actually paint wise, this one does have a contaminant. So the paint wise generally is pretty good. I mean, compared to Kyosho or TLV, this one is a problem, but all the other ones, there's nothing. There was that one water stain one, but five of seven, I, I would say are almost perfect paint jobs. This one is a problem, and that other one with the water stain. But this one also, eh, a little orange peel, but it's acceptable, I guess. So, yeah, like I was saying, I think I'm still sticking with Aoshima to be like the best uh, paint quality percentage wise. I mean, this is probably, I don't know exactly how many I have. I might have 30 of these Aoshimas now, and I think maybe five, four might have problems like that. Okay. Okay, well, hopefully you learned something a little about the cars at least, and uh, you know you might want to hop on eBay and check out some Aoshimas if if this type of style looks appealing to you. I almost feel like these are like the first drift cars. You know, drifting uh, originated in 1970s Japan, and these cars are all from the 70s. Well, mostly from the 70s. So this looks like uh, an early drift car. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not a histor or historian, but. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.